I'm thrilled to have our next guest on the Folsom Lake Honda Hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Outstanding beat writer for the Sacramento Kings, Chris Biederman. How are you today, Chris? I'm great. How are you guys? We're very good. Great. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Let me just ask you, I know it's a little, uh, little kind of a cliche thing, but everybody's talking about it today. Where are you, sir, in terms of whether this is a rivalry or not? To me, it's like a cold rivalry. It's always <laughs> it's kind of dormant, and now it's going to heat up. Yeah, you know, I, I think what in, in this very moment, Thursday at 11 a.m., it's probably less of a rivalry than it will be av after the series, after the series goes on. That's what right. makes rivalries, right, is having series, playing against each other in, in high-stakes moments, um, you know, crowds being in the same building, whether it's Warriors fans in Golden 1 or Kings fans going over to Chase. I think there's going to be a good mix of both in both venues. Um, I think, you know, based on if, if you're on Twitter – uh, you're seeing a lot of mm. a lot of discussion, uh, I would say, and and I think that lends itself to to being a rivalry or at least creating a rivalry. So I think, right. you know, it it has to to your point, Whitey. I think it's it's kind of been a cold rivalry because these are both Northern California teams with both, um, you know, histories in their own right, albeit at different times. And this is obviously the first time both teams have made the postseason at the same time. So that's how rivalries are really born, right? It's it's when you square off in the playoffs, when the stakes are really high, when emotions are really high, um, and when you know you basically extend your season or end your season uh, against your foe. So yeah, I think I think it's definitely going to ramp up a few notches um, after after the series, no matter how it turns out. And I would expect it to be a pretty healthy rivalry going forward because I don't think either of these teams are going anywhere anytime soon, barring something catastrophic and, and unforeseen. Right. Me and Whitey were talking the other day uh, about this. Chris, who who do you think, which player in this series do you think has the most to prove? I think it's Davion Mitchell from the Kings perspective. Interesting. Because, look, I, I, you know, you look at the Kings starting lineup, I don't know what options they really have to credibly guard Steph Curry, right? Like we right. saw Marcus Smart, the defensive player of the year, on the best defense in the NBA last season, really struggle to, to do much of anything against Steph Curry. Right. And the, the, it's not like the, the Kings have somebody in their starting lineup who you would consider a, a defender on, on that level. And so their best option really to guard Steph is, is going to be Davion, but you know, he's a 32% three point shooter. And I would imagine like the Warriors did in that Friday game, they're going to let him shoot from three and give him open looks and, and crowd other players on, on that end. And if Davion Mitchell hits some threes, then that could drastically change the calculus of how the Warriors approach things while Davion also plays credible defense on Steph Curry. So I think he's probably the wild card, in my opinion, for the Kings, because, you know, if he hits three or four threes, that could really swing one of these games. Um, but if he's cold from from long range and and sort of unplayable, or at least it feels like the the, the Warriors are playing five on four defensively, then that that's going to make it really hard for the Kings to win games. So um, I think Davion Mitchell is a big wild card. He's, you know, he's a 32% three point shooter. I think he can, he can have a huge say on how this series goes, because if he hits threes um, and, and also plays defense on, on Curry, then I think the Kings have a much better shot. If he's not hitting threes then he's not going to be in the game as much as maybe the Kings would need him just to defend Steph. And then it, that tilts in, in the Warriors favor pretty su substantially in my opinion. The great Chris Biederman, our guest today. To that point, Chris, how you hope to slow down Curry? I think we have the answer. Uh, it's a box and one with Fox as the one, which would be, of course, the Fox and one. And I, we're gonna, yeah, I'm telling you, <laughs> we're gonna see it. And remember, you heard it here first. But all kidding aside, you know, Nick Nurse had a lot of success or some success with a janky defenses against Steph in the 2019 Finals. How creative do you think we can expect Coach Brown to get when it comes to efforts to at least slow down number 30? Yeah, I, I think if anybody can devise a plan or multiple plans to try to slow down Steph, it's probably Mike Brown. Not only because he is a defensive-minded coach um, who's coached you know, quality defenses in the NBA basically throughout his career, but he knows the Warriors personnel as well as anybody. And so that that is an advantage. Um, I would imagine a lot of trapping Steph uh, you know, at 30 feet away from the hoop and forcing the ball out of his hands. I will say, you know, in that 2019 series, you know, the Warriors were missing Kevin Durant and they were, you know, Clay Thompson left in, in game six. It became a lot easier to play yes. box in one with those guys out. 
Um, but that being said, like we don't know what Andrew Wiggins is going to look like, right? Even before he left, we he he wasn't playing particularly well, and he was dealing with the groin injury. Um, so Wiggins is another wild card. If if Wiggins comes back and plays like he did in the playoffs last year, that's a huge huge thing for the Warriors because he was probably their second best player. Um, if not, then I think the Warriors become a little bit easier to defend, obviously. But you know, the the one thing I would say about you know trapping Curry or even playing box and one, uh, when you look at the Kings' defense, their weak side defense and their help defense was a big issue throughout the season. And the Warriors are really good at you know playing three on four or four on three and getting downhill and having Draymond Green be the distributor and having guys cutting to the rim or guys spotting up at, at three point at the three the three point line. So you know, it's, it's kind of a pick your poison thing with them. I, there's, there's been little evidence from the Kings this season that they can play a trapping style defense mm -hmm. and still hold up on the back end. So that's going to be a big challenge. And, you know, in terms of De'Aaron Fox, like he's, you know, he's athletic enough, he's long enough. Um, but do you want him running around with Steph Curry all day when you're going to have to rely on him in the fourth quarter to, to score for you? Like, do you, or do you want to wear him out on that end or, um, or, or just, are, are you going to run that way and, and test his energy levels against Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, potentially, you know, two, two guys who move off the ball as well as anybody in the league. So that's, that's a big challenge. That's a big question mark, but yeah, I, the boxing one could, could work, um, it, it you know, or, or at least slow things down and make the Warriors have to think for a little bit, but, you know, we've seen the Warriors adjust to deep, to different schemes defensively, um, yeah. as series have gone on before, but it's, if there's anybody who can come up with something or multiple ideas, I, I do think it's Mike Brown, and I do think the Kings might have an advantage from that standpoint. That's a good point. I mean, um, we don't want Fox expending that much energy, but the Fox and one is just such a good name. So. <laughs> it is. Yeah, That's, yeah. Shout out to you. That's good. That uh, Chris, I heard you ask uh, Coach Brown yesterday at practice about the the physicality of the playoffs. How do you think that this team will respond to to being in the playoffs for the first time and in dealing with the kind of physicality that comes with postseason basketball? You know, that that's that's really sort of the biggest question for me going into going into this series and just the playoffs in general, no matter who the Kings would have played, um, because that was what Mike Brown cited really after every loss. It was, you know, we lacked yep. physicality. Yep. Um, we lacked uh, we didn't get into guys chess. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't make them uncomfortable early in games. The Kings so often would just sort of cruise into games and, and you know, fall behind by double digits in the first quarter sort of unnecessarily because they wouldn't for supposing teams to to play with any discomfort right so I, I think that's been a huge emphasis and honestly it's it's a big question mark because you know like we've never the kings have never been in this position before right. and we've you know they they have been a top 10 from an efficiency standpoint road defense through throughout the regular season um, but does that portend to the playoffs when, you know, other, when the playoff intensity is up from the other team's perspective, right? Like right. what's that going to look like? They don't have a particularly physical roster. I would say outside of Demonis Sabonis and Harrison Barnes and Davion Mitchell and Kessler Edwards, there's, there's not a ton of physicality just in, in terms of the way the, the Kings roster is constructed. So it's going to be a big test. Um, I, I think they will play better defense than they did in the regular season. It, it would be really difficult not to, but, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> but it, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be fascinating to see uh, ultimately, like, I wish I had a better answer for you, but I guess we got to see how it plays yeah. out in, you know, as the season goes on or as a, the series goes on, because right. uh, that's, that to me is the biggest question. Can they match the playoff level physicality mm -hmm. and intensity that it takes? Because we know the Warriors can. Yeah. I don't have to tell you this, but for outstanding Kings coverage, check out Chris Biederman in the Sacramento Bee. Chris, thanks so much. We appreciate it. This is going to be fun. Uh, we hope to talk to you again soon. Please. No problem. Thank, thank you guys for having me. Uh-huh. Oh, absolutely. Woo! That's, and that's, maybe it's not a great answer, but it's the right answer to a lot of these questions. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah, it's the unfortunate thing, and it's not it's not a very good, uh, you know, if you and I can't just